Hi guys, welcome back. So, we've got a new toy, and I think this may well be my best purchase of the year so far. It is a little tabletop tripod, of course I bought it for filming. However, it's actually a lot more stout than I imagined. I've been having a quick play with it. It looks like it's going to be a perfect candidate actually to use as a tripod with the rifles. So we're going to have a good look at it today, see whether or not it's strong enough and robust enough to actually shoot off. And let's see whether or not these Arca Swiss tripods are as good as everyone makes out. Let's go. Right, this is the beast. So this is the brand, Art Size. I don't know who these people are. I have no affiliation with them. It was quite a good buy off of eBay. Actually, it was 42 quid. Now, the quality of this, it's really quite stout. It's all aluminium, got foam around the legs, and it's got these quite nice locking legs. This is in its lowest configuration at the moment. Now, these legs do extend. We'll look at that later on because that might be quite useful if you're shooting from a hide or something like that. But what I really wanted to do is see whether or not we can actually shoot the 9015 off of it off the bench. Now, we may need to adjust the height. There's this midsection here that may well need trimming down. But of course, what I don't want to do is chop that down and then lose the functionality from a filming in the shed, which is what I bought it for. Right, you can see on the bottom of the 9015 there, I've got this great big Arca Swiss plate. Now that's 30 centimeters long. I've actually sighted it so that it comes back. The balance point of the rifle is about here. So once it's on the ball head, we shouldn't have to tighten this up too much for it to stay balanced, but we can keep it just slack enough so we can move it on to aim if we need to. Now, Arca Swiss is a proprietary system commonly found in cameras like DSLRs and things like that. Now, whilst I don't know an awful lot about cameras, I do know that they're flipping expensive and the majority of these fancy cameras make the 9015 look like a toy in price comparison so they've got to be pretty stout this feels pretty good now this is actually the third one of these well this is actually the third one that i've ordered of different brands the first two i got off of amazon and they were rubbish this one has much more substantial leg locks like i said i don't know who these people are i have no affiliation with them but so far i'm really really quite impressed and it was 42 quid delivered so let's see if we can get this on there see whether or not it's stable now we are on the wobbly table today that's why I commonly shoot off the bag. It's quite a nice stable position for me. I can lean over the top of the rifle, get everything sort of locked in, and I'm dead stable now. Whether or not it's going to be a little bit more wobbly with this, I imagine it will be, but we'll give it a try. Right, there you go. So you can see I've just clamped it on. It's got a thumb wheel on the other side, so you only need to give it about a turn and a half, and it locks on solid. A basic explanation of Arca Swiss is it's effectively a ginormous dovetail. Now, of course, because I've got the extended rail on here, I can slide it back and forward, so I can slide it further forward on the rifle and use it more like a bipod, potentially. And at the moment, supporting the whole rifle because it's sort of set about its balance point, it's not going to suddenly fall over now. It feels pretty sturdy. So I'm going to get a couple of targets out. It's really windy, so we're not actually going to attempt to do anything accuracy wise, but we want to see how stable this is and whether or not it's going to be usable going forward. So we've got a small amount of flex in there, which actually is probably not a bad thing. It'll allow you to come onto aim. So I've just got a small bit of tension on the actual ball head here. It feels pretty smooth, so it's obviously running on nylon buffers or bushes or something along those lines. It feels pretty good. Now, whilst this is not a position I'm particularly familiar with sort of shooting from, there's just enough flex in there to bring it on target. So at the moment, you can see that I'm actually looking slightly downwards. The targets are slightly lower than we are. However, I can just put just a tiny bit of pressure on the rifle and bring that onto aim. So, so shooting one-handed, literally just into the shoulder. I mean, that's easy. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I feel like I'm more wobbly when I'm upright like this. When I'm slumped over, everything's a bit more relaxed. My rib cage is more compressed, but... Hmm. First impressions are very good. I mean, the pan on here is really quite smooth. That definitely... That tightens up a tiny bit. Okay, so that's pretty good. The actual table itself is wobbling quite a bit. This is a little wobbly table we shoot off a lot. Um, that's actually quite a solid little shooting platform. You can see I've got it here basically on the balance point of the rifle. What I'm going to do in a moment is just slide it a little bit further forward and see if it performs like a bipod would do. Now at the moment, having it in the balance point or at the balance point, I've got no real contact with my body. I've got just the smallest of touches. Of course, the scope set a bit further forward. We're normally shooting this prone most of the time, so the scope would want to come back a little bit. However, that reduces my actual contact with the rifle, so there's less chance of me imparting heartbeats to it, wobbles, anything like that. Using the tripod itself to give as much support to the rifle means the less I've got to do and the less chance of me wobbling off. I mean, that's really quite cool, actually. That's a lot more stable than I thought. Now, these legs extend as well. What we'll do, we've just got a little slider on the front here, so we can... Interestingly, there's little stops on here, there's little bolt heads, so that stops you from... I'm probably out of shot now. That's a bit of a reach. I propped up on me 
elbows. I mean, that's going to work like that beautifully. We've got enough movement in there to get on target. However, it kind of defies the point of having that tripod there in the first place because now I've got all of the load of the back end of that rifle. The majority of the weight is now being supported by my left hand. And of course, that means I'm imparting pulse movement and all sorts. So certainly very versatile, but I'd probably rather just have it in the middle there, let the tripod do all the work. I reckon I'd be more stable. Let's get a couple of shots off like this quickly. I mean, that's super easy. If I let go of that now, it's just gonna gently glide back down so you can see that I'm still supporting the weight of the majority of the rifle there. I was worried that that height might actually be too much, but I'll tell you what, you could quite easily get used to this. If you were sat at a bench, especially if you've gotta be sat upright, if you're more comfortable sat upright, you'd need to adjust your setup accordingly. Let's say the scope would need to come back a fair way. However, that's pretty good. This is rated to 10 kilos, apparently. Now the 9015 doesn't weigh 10 kilos, it's probably about 15 pounds, so about seven kilos, something like that. I've intentionally kept it quite heavy, but it certainly doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart. Of course, if it does, I'll let you know going forward. Right, we all have a little bipod. Now I keep this on the Catran all the time. This is just a little flimsy job. It's a little knockoff one of an Act Attack, I think it's a clone of it. Now, of course, bipods come in all different shapes, sizes, and widths from about 20 quid to beautifully CNC machined, high-end stuff for hundreds of pounds. However, the one problem with these himself, because it's sat right far forward on the rifle at the moment, all of again, the loading of that rifle is going down through my left hand, which it's not a problem. This is a very light little gun. You can hold this all day, but I do tend to find that I end up using the butt hook tucked into my shoulder for a bit more extra stability. That would certainly work quite well off the tripod. I think if we cut that middle section down, which I will do, I'm gonna test it actually some filming in the shed to make sure it does everything that I need it to before trimming it down. If people are trusting this for cameras that are many, many thousands of pounds, I'm sure it's gonna be all right with quite lightweight things. I'm sure this weighs significantly less than one of them great big DSLR cameras. It's probably an awful lot cheaper as well. Right, that wind's getting right up over the top of us. Now this weighs about a kilo just under, something like 900 grams or thereabouts. So that's significantly lighter than a sand filled bag. Now this shooting bag that we use is filled with silica cat litter. It seems to be working quite well. It's quite crunchy, quite compliant. However, now I'm just gonna get a few shots off. It actually feels like the little tripod may be more stable than the bag is, which is interesting. I much prefer this sort of slightly more lent over position. Now, of course, I'm normally shooting prone off of the deck. So I tend to have a sort of slumped over shooting position. The rib cage is all sort of compressed or sat on top of each other. So there's very little chance to move. It's a quite unusual sitting up with a straight back. When you see me shooting the XTI a fair bit, that's the other red one, I'll often have the sandbag about the balance point of the rifle because especially since I chopped my hand, I want less of the rifle leaning on me Basically, it means that I impart less pulse movement, less wobble. When you've actually got your support, whether it be a rest or a bipod or anything like that, the more support that can give you, the less chances of I've got actually wobbling off, moving it, anything like that. So I'm quite surprised. I like this stance that I'm in, but actually I much prefer the feel of that. It's got a bit more tension on the ball head. This is a little bit wobbly. Feels. surprisingly more stable than I thought it would. Well, what I'm gonna do now is extend these legs and see how stable it is with those extended. They're quite skinny little legs. I don't think I would necessarily trust it with them extended, certainly with something like this or the XTI on it. However, this is what I got it for. And at this sort of setup with the legs collapsed down in their most robust position, it really is quite a solid little bit of kit. So yeah, quite a good buy so far. All right, let's extend them and see how good they are. So of course there is much bigger ones. I've got some slightly larger tripods, very similar. In fact, the one that the phone's on right now is similar to this, but it's nowhere nearly as substantial as this little one. Okay, so if you was on a little stool, that would be perfectly adequate for shooting from a hide. Right, let's move the table out of the way and I'll go and grab something to... Well, in fact, you could kneel off of that. That'd probably work really well. Got a little bit of flex in it, as you'd imagine. I'm not sure that I entirely trust these legs fully extended, however. I mean, that's really quite surprising. Now it's got a bit of weight on it. That's under the 10 kilo limit that it's rated to, but I do not feel entirely confident that it's 
it still feels pretty stout. I'm not sure that them twisty legs on there are the most robust things. However, I didn't buy it for this. I got it just to use more like a bipod. Hmm. Quite surprised with that, really. 42 quid. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be pretty cool. If you were sat on a little folding stool, something like that, if you were shooting from a hide all day, I think you could do an awful lot worse than that, especially for the money. All of this is aluminium, all of the frames aluminium. The only bits on here that I can see that are plastic or nylon is the little buffer bush around the actual ball head. And these leg lockers look like they're a sort of nylon material, which, yeah, I don't know how I feel about it being extended like that, but for what we bought it for, for what I'm going to use it for, I think that's really pretty cool. So I'm gonna take it back home and have a better look at it in some decent light and out the wind and see whether or not we can actually use it for the up close filming like I hope. So I'll see you at home. So this is what I got it for, is actually to replace this great big one. Now, of course, the shed is only tiny. When I'm standing here, we're looking at our targets, things we've been working on, whatever, this gets right in the way. So the whole idea actually with this one here was to be a little tabletop one so I can have it up here, maybe look down at the targets and whatever. But let me just pop you back into this big one, which all of a sudden feels like it's really inconvenient. And then we'll have another little look at this little cheapy. Right, well, I've got to say, guys, this is actually a lot more substantial than I was expecting it to be. It's got a huge amount of adjustability, and I think going forward, actually, this is going to be something of a game changer for my shooting, especially at the longer ranges. If I can get the little tripod itself to support the rifle more, certainly it's going to mean that there's less input from me, less chance of pulling shots, bad trigger technique, budging it with my shoulder, anything like that wobbling and moving off. So certainly for the longer range shooting, I think this is going to be really quite decent. Now, it did come with two small sections of... The Arca Swiss rail, as you can see there, I've got one of my, this is a little clamp, you know, for the old smartphone. I use these obviously for filming. Came with two of those, so I can probably put the GoPro on one of those, that on there. And of course now I've got the long section of Arca rail that's fitted under the 9015. One thing I will say though, I'm gonna quickly show you it. That long Arca Swiss rail that I've got bolted on there, because it's all scalloped out underneath just to reduce the weight and things like that, this is really uncomfortable to hold in your forehand. Now, of course, if you've got a glove on, it's fine. If you're using it off the tripod, it's fine. But if you wanted to swap in and out, you'd probably want to find a slightly better rail than the one that I've got on here. Now, this was very cheap. It was under 10 quid off of eBay. It's really nicely made, but because of the shape of that with the cutouts, it's really uncomfortable. But the key to the versatility of this is having a long rail. So you can actually have it sighted at the balance point, or if you want it slid much further towards the front, like a bipod, just going to make it much more user friendly but overall art tice art size nb28 i think that's the ball head i'll see if i can find the model off of this so this is actually the third one that i've had now this is they're all different brands the first two came off of amazon and this one came off of ebay but they were different brands but the leg locks on those were absolutely terrible these are spring loaded and the ball head on this art size version is significantly more substantial than all the others. So as I've said, I have nothing to do with these people. It's not a sponsored thing. It's a shame there's probably not an affiliate link because I reckon for 40 quid, you'd be really quite happy with this. Going forward, we're gonna use this a little bit more. I can't at the moment make any comments on its longevity, how well it's gonna last, but I certainly looking at this, it's really quite substantial. I can't imagine it's gonna fall apart just like that. So that'll do it for this one, guys. I will see you in the next one. Hopefully this wind dies off and the place starts to dry out because we've got an awful lot to do. So see you then.